Good afternoon, accepted students and families. I'm Dr. Nancy Meadson. I'm the Dean of the School of Nursing. Um, first of all, let me say congratulations on being accepted into our nursing program. Uh, as you probably know, we receive over 900 qualified applications, so uh, you should be very proud of this achievement. Um, the faculty and I are delighted that you've chosen Endicott College School of Nursing as the place that you'd like to spend the next four years of your nursing career. Um, also, I'd like to say, you know, amongst everything we're experiencing right now with the coronavirus, we're so excited to have all these um, just really talented um, students coming into nursing. We really need wonderful people in the nursing profession right now. Um, so if I were to tell you today what the number one reason is I would choose Endicott College School of Nursing, it would be our expert, dedicated, kind, and compassionate faculty. Um, the faculty here put the students first, and as an educator and as a parent, I think that's um, really what sets us apart. So for this presentation, I've asked our wonderful faculty to, do, um, to present our college to you. Um, and then at the end, um, if you could use the chat feature, I will um, take questions um, from anyone that has them. Okay, so to start, it is my um, pleasure to introduce our S Associate Dean of the Undergraduate Program, Dr. Amy Smith. A warm hello to everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. My name is Amy Smith, and I'm the Associate Dean of the Undergraduate Program here at the School of Nursing. We are so excited to share some information with you today about our program, and we'll begin with our, our esteemed colleague, Dr. Karen Crosby, who will talk to you about advising and student support. Welcome, my name is Karen Crosby, and I teach across the lifespan here at Endicott. I teach fundamentals, I teach medical surgical nursing, and senior thesis. It's my pleasure to introduce to you some of the academic supporting systems that we have for all students in our nursing program. We are firmly convinced that one size does not fit all when we talk about learning style. Our course faculty provide content review sessions in group or one-on-one -on -one sessions at the student's request. All exam review content is revised with all of the students and again, can be one-on-one -on -one with the student's request. Faculty also prepare all of our students for online assessments, which are aimed at tracking their progress across the program. We are also privileged to have a professional nurse tutor. Our nursing tutor provides one-on-one, -on -one, small group, and online sessions. Our tutor will con do content review. Our tutor also has given the students some opportunity to learn about their learning styles and to appropriately craft their study guide to match their style. In addition, our nursing tutor provides review of online assessments. College-wide, we support students learning with the Tutoring and Writing Center. The Tutoring Center provides professional and peer tutoring for all subjects and written assignments. Special note is that the peer tutors very often are nursing students. These students have been recommended by faculty for their excellent academic performance and their one-on-one -on -one support of our students is most welcome. Our Tutoring and Writing Center have convenient online scheduling for in-person and online sessions. In addition, our research librarians assist all of the students with research projects and our upperclassmen with database management for their own research. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Sharon Milne. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I will be talking to you today about academic advising, but a little bit about myself. Um, I, too, have taught across um, the curriculum. I've taught um, my major course is psychosocial nursing, uh, mental health nursing, um, which is currently in the junior year. I have also taught research here, uh, community 
internship and fundamentals. So today I'm going to be talking to you about, like I said, academic advising. So we here at Endicott um, in the nursing program believe uh, in this um, academic individualized um, plan of care with our students where we will uh, do pre-registration meetings with our advisees. We will advise you in your curriculum mapping, have you take a look at what the curriculum entails and when you'll be taking each of your courses. Um, we will also help you um, selecting your electives. There'll be a vast number of electives that you'll need to take throughout your time here at Endicott College and will help you tailor your um, needs, but also uh, your interests in, when it comes to your electives. And then of course, we will help you um, with your nursing courses. Um, the faculty are available anywhere from five plus hours a week, uh, either in our offices, um, most of the time you can reach us online or in um, scheduled one-on-one -on -one meetings or even group meetings. Um, we will assist you with the um, registration process um, when you're adding and dropping classes. We will walk you through that. Um, we also offer uh, study abroad courses, which um, Dr. Cindy uh, Mitsakis will talk about briefly. And if some of you have an interest in a minor, we can help, um, help with that and tailor your classes and um, you know, needs based there. We also offer um, this individualized support um, outside of academics when needed. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, student nurses who are also athletes, um, so we try to assist them uh, through the rigor of the program, as well as um, see you out on the field or on the ice, things like that. Um, and also through our ROTC program, we will also um, be very helpful um, in tailoring your schedule and your needs to that. And I think one of the best parts uh, about Endicott advising is that you really get to know um, your, your advisees on an individual basis. And um, some of the comments I've heard through parents in the um, past has been, you know, it's nice to know that um, my student has a drop-in that they can go and, and, and have it be a home away from home. Um, we do um, typically only have about 25 students, so we are um, able to, you know, formulate and, and have those relationships with um, each one of our students. So that's the academic advising. And at this point, I would like to introduce Dr. Bethany Nasser, who will be talking to you about the NCLEX. Thank you, Sharon. My name is Bethany Nasser, and I teach a variety of classes here at Endicott. Um, starting out sophomore year, teaching fundamentals in care of the adult, as well as a test prep class sophomore year, and then senior year um, teaching internship community health, and again, a senior test prep. So what is all this about prep, test prep? Well, when you graduate from any nursing school, you need to take a licensure exam to become a registered nurse. So after you finish all four years, you have to sit down and take this test. And it is a computerized test, which you can get a variety of questions from 75 to 265 questions. And here at Endicott, we start preparing you, you know, right away for this test. So starting second semester of freshman year, when you start your first nursing um, course, health assessment, we start you in something called ATI. We partner with ATI, it's called Assessment Technology Institute. And it is an online company, and it has lots of videos and activities, and we thread it all through our curriculum, starting with the freshman year health assessment. And it's getting you ready to take tests on a computer that are NCLEX-based. These are very different style questions than you've ever taken before, and we prepare you starting that freshman year. Each class you'll take, you will take a comprehensive predictor test to see how you've done in that course. And nobody ever does not pass a course based off that one standardized test, but it's just getting you to know the areas you have weakness. Then second semester of your senior year, we have sort of the bigger, it's called a capstone. We have ATI and you have a one-on-one -on -one coach through ATI that works with you to help you study for your NCLEX. You also have you know, your professors that help you with this. This year, we just started doing virtual ATI and our seniors just started this and they are preparing more and more for their NCLEX. And in the end, they take a predictor test that shows how well 
they will do on their NCLEX exam. And we still hold on to your hand even after you graduate all summer long. We have you take little tests until you're ready to take that test. And we have a great pass rate of 91%. So that's all about, seems a long time from now that you'll be taking that test, but before you'll know it, you'll be seniors. I'd like to introduce next to talk about um, nursing stats freshman year is Dr. Emily Smith. Hi everyone and welcome. Thanks for spending your time with us today. I'm here to talk to you about an early start for your nursing classes at Endicott College. At Endicott, our nursing students start their nursing courses during the spring of their freshman year. The first nursing course students take is health assessment, one of the courses that I teach um, with the freshman students. This class prepares our students for their first clinical experience, which starts in the fall of their sophomore year, where they travel to varied institutions pro um, providing hands-on care to patients. The health assessment course prepares students to provide safe and effective care, including vital signs, a variety of skills, and all kinds of care needed for inpatient settings. The health assessment course teaches systematic head-to-toe assessment, system by system of the human body. The lab portion of this class utilizes our brand new health assessment lab and allows students experience practicing skills, giving them the confidence they need when they transition to their clinical placements. Starting nursing courses during freshman year is unique. Many schools don't allow their students to place in clinical settings sometimes till the end of the second uh, semester sophomore year or even into the junior year. Nursing student, introducing nursing students to skills and knowledge early allows students the opportunity for three full semesters of clinical experiences at Endicott College, preparing them for a really nice transition to practice. So we look forward to seeing you. And next is Dr. Cindy Mitsakis, who will discuss study abroad. Hello and welcome. Um, as Dr. Smith mentioned, my name is Dr. Cindy Mitsakis, and I have the um, great fortune of teaching from freshman year, the first class, Dr. Smith mentioned health assessment. So freshmen, um, that are right here from, from high school all the way to acute care. And that is my specialty. I'm an emergency room nurse. So it's lovely to see these students. And the truth is, yesterday I was in a, a Zoom classroom with all of my seniors and I actually, truthfully, I'm embarrassingly started crying because to watch them grow has been so amazing. These young, um, kids, if you will, grow into these nurses. I am so, so proud of how much effort they put into things and how much um, compassion they have. It's been wonderful to watch and, and I get to see that. So I, I thank them for it and a few of them started crying too. So it's been amazing to watch the journey and I'm lucky that I get to start at the beginning and then I also get um, that them at the end when they're all polished. Many of them are working now in the hospitals. So we've been really having to, to work together to, to figure out how to finish our our semester here and they've been wonderful. We have the most amazing students. I'm very proud of them. I'm gonna talk a little about study abroad. Again, I'm lucky because this is really fun to talk about. These are student pictures from, um, from the students. They love to email us pictures of where they are and how much fun they're having. It is an amazing opportunity for these students. It's one of the few um, nursing schools that allow this for our for the nursing students it's very hard to um, make it work and, and many programs don't allow it and and it's such an important thing for them to experience a different culture to experience um, different environments and atmospheres from Australia to um, New Zealand to um, Spain you name it. So it really gives them a different lens to see the world and to see maybe a different perspective where people are coming from and um, their healthcare there and how it differs from ours. We also have short-term immersion trips. Guatemala, I believe, is coming up and um, Peru 
for some of those students that don't want to go for, you know, three, three and a half months. It's, it's a long time to be away, um, although most to enjoy it, some are not interested in that. And we also have those, like I said, one or two week trips, which give them a taste and um, they really appreciate that as well. So lucky, lucky for us all to be able to have this experience. They go their junior year. Um, it's worked into their schedule should they try to go and we work with them like Dr. Milne mentioned with advising and they let us know uh, earlier on if they're interested or not. I'd like to introduce Dr. Jessica Oakes that will talk about active learning. Thank you, Dr. Mitsakis. Appreciate that. Um, welcome. I'm glad you all could be with us today. I'm very excited to get to talk to you and tell you a little bit about some of our teaching methods. Um, I have been fortunate. I'm able, I've been teaching the freshmen in their health assessment course as well this semester, along with Dr. Smith. Um, and I've been able to teach the sophomores their pharmacology. And I'm well known to be the pediatric pediatrics faculty for the junior class. So I'm very lucky to be able to see all different levels. Um, and it's just been such a pleasure knowing the students and I will echo what all my colleagues have said. We really are a great college, a great place to learn nursing. The faculty are all wonderful. The students for the most part are so, they're collegial. They, they want to help each other and they're a nice team. So it's really a great place to be. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you about active learning and what it is and what it why you want it. Um, so active learning is really it's a process of learning by engaging with the content. And you know what does that mean? It just means that it's a different way to look at learning rather than um, having someone sit and talk to you. Um, you are more engaged with it. You get to actually uh, talk about it, talk through it, put your hands on it, um, see some visual visuals with it, and it. it really helps to cement the learning in your head. So one of the things I always talk about with students when I talk about some important content is, well, why do you want it? Or why do you need to know it? Or why is this important? Um, and I think that for you as future students in the School of Nursing, active learning is important and you want it because it's fun. And evidence has shown that it promotes recall and deeper understanding of the material. Um, so as you progress throughout your nursing courses, it's really going to stick with you and help you as you transition into the role of the nurse. Um, so some examples of how we utilize active learning. Uh, we do role play in, in a lot of the courses. We do role play where you get to be the patient and the nurse and kind of feel what it, it's like to be in both roles. Um, in the maternity course, there is a escape room game that you'll play that really helps you cement the content in your head as you prepare for your exams and prepare for clinical and caring for these patients. Uh, in pediatrics, we do a toy chest game where we're really looking at all these different toys and how we can integrate that into our care of the hospitalized child to make their stay better, to really um, connect with them on a developmental level. So active learning is great, it's fun. You wanna be at a school that offers that and we try to thread it throughout all the courses. So now I'm going to introduce um, Professor Caroline Bolatero. She is the director for the simulation and um, lab. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Caroline Bolatero. I'm the simulation coordinator here at Endicott College. Um, I'm very lucky, um, similar to Dr. Mitsakis, that I get to teach everybody across the curriculum. I start in the freshman year um, with the uh, health assessment students and then in the senior year with the acute care students. I am currently a nurse um, in the cardiac surgery ICU at Brigham and Women's and have been there for about 20 years. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about our simulation and lab environments. Students here at Endicott, they really do receive a great experience because we have simulation thread throughout our curriculum. And these environments really provide a safe space where students can make mistakes, learn from them, and then transfer that knowledge to the clinical setting to provide both safe and effective care to the patients that they're caring for. Um, starting in the freshman year, students enter our new lab space um, that was completed this past December 
the images are right there, to learn how to assess a patient from head to toe. It really does provide them um, that environment to kind of simulate or get their heads kind of wrapped around a doctor's office. And what really the patient um, will look like and how to assess them and interact with a patient. In um, the sophomore year, first semester, the students will come to the lab to learn basic care skills prior to going to their very first clinical. Um, their second semester, sophomore year, they're going to have their first simulation experience, typically with a post-operative patient, which is what they will be experiencing in the clinical setting. Following their sophomore year into their junior year at Hendicott, um, the students are going to learn how to care for both the pediatric patient as well as the birthing mother and infant. Um, most of the students really enjoy this. Um, uh, environment, especially the little babies in the hospital. Finally, the students um, in their senior year, they have a simulation that deals with effective communication and end-of-life care. And these are things they may see in the critical care environment and maybe haven't had a personal experience with yet. So we are able to work that out in the simulation environment so that they're prepared for it when they go into the clinical setting. So we continue to improve our lab space um, and continue to provide new uh, simulation experiences for our students. And we'll be expanding our current simulation lab this summer for the fall 2020 semester. I look forward to meeting you all and um, look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you. And now I'm going to have the pleasure of introducing uh, Professor Rachel Salguero. Hi everyone and congratulations on your acceptance and you've also chosen a great career path. Um, I know for me nursing has been one of the best decisions that I made. Um, I currently still work per diem at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston as a staff nurse and then I work full-time at Endicott um, where I'm the Associate Director of Clinical Education. So I also have a very exciting part of, of my role because students always love their clinical placement. Um, oftentimes that's their favorite part um, of nursing at Endicott. So I work with all of our clinical faculty um, in ensuring that our students have great placements and um, you know, really great experiences in the hospital settings. Our, as Dr. Smith mentioned, our students do start their freshman year in um, health assessment working in the lab. And then right away, sophomore year, first semester, um, we put you in a hospital setting so you can really start to get that hands-on um, experience with a real patient. Um, so sophomore year, both in the fall and in the spring, you will have your medical surgical rotations. And we try really hard at Endicott to make sure our students have a good balance between small community hospitals on the North Shore area, as well as the larger teaching hospitals in Boston. Um, so as you can see here, we, a lot of our clinical placements, um, we are, we do have students at uh, Mass General Hospital, Brigham and Women's, Tufts, Boston Medical Center, and Children's Hospital Boston. We also have a lot of our smaller community hospitals, such as Beverly Hospital and North Shore Medical Center. Our students do have the opportunity to have seven rotations total, um, and as well as an internship at the end um, on their senior year. So the seven internships, like I said, will start sophomore year, and those are your medical surgical rotations. And then junior year, our students have the opportunity to have a maternity clinical, a pediatric clinical and a psychiatric clinical. And then once they get to senior year, they have community health clinical as well as an acute care clinical. And we also offer an internship that's 135 hours with the student and a preceptor at a hospital or a community health setting. So it's a one-on-one -on -one, um, where the student works the nurse's hours and they're given that opportunity to really immerse themselves in the role. So this is oftentimes a really exciting part and we're very proud that we have really wonderful hospital affiliates um, and great clinical instructors. Okay, so now I would like to introduce, I'm sure you wanna hear from a real student. Um, so this is Cassidy Armstrong, who is a current junior, and she was actually a student of mine this past fall before she left us to study abroad. Hi, I'm Cassidy. I'm a junior um, and I actually just came back from studying abroad in Spain and I'm actually a double minor in psych and in wellness and nutrition. 
Um, and Endicott has been such a great experience for me. <laughs> yeah. So we have staff tutors and peer tutors, and I take advantage of both. I've gone to um, my peer tutor for every single class that I've had almost, and that's so great. And a lot of the tutors have done all of the classes and tutor all of the classes. So like my tutor, Catherine, I had for anatomy and then for um, care of adults and also for health assessment, and you get a really good bond with them. And our um, teachers are also super helpful. You can always get office hours and talk to them about anything going on in or out of the classroom, and they're so helpful with that. Um, and their clinical sites are so great. I've had clinicals at um, Boston Children's and at Brigham and Women's, but also like Beverly and smaller hospitals. And it's really great because you get to see a variety and see where you're the happiest. And so then when you're choosing your internship, you've already had so many clinical experiences that you can think about what you're really interested in and go for that. So like my internship, I'm hoping to get in the psych field because I love my psych clinical so much. Um, another thing that's great about Endicott is that we have, um, so our administrator Maureen will send out job opportunities a lot in the area. So after your sophomore year, you can start looking for um, CNA jobs. So I work with a man who's in a wheelchair and it's been really good to get to like, a, build a relationship and get to see what it's like actually working with a patient outside of the school. And um, yeah, I love Endicott so much that I end up being an orientation leader. So I'll probably have some of you guys in my group. And yeah. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so now we'll open it up to questions. Uh, can Dr. You, yep. Can you tell us a little bit more about this fifth year program? That might be an option. Sure, I would love to. Um, so our fifth year program is available for any of our um, undergraduate nursing students who would like to stay at Endicott and continue on and get their master's in nursing. So our master's in nursing program, we have four different tracks. We have a family nurse practitioner program. We also have master's in education, administration, and global health nursing. So the students, it's a seamless transition. It's a very, um, convenient application process. We know the students, we pass this, the information along to the graduate directors, um, and the students can take a course as part of their load in, um, in their undergraduate program. So as a senior, they can take one of their master's courses, they pass their NCLEX exam, and then they start right into our master's program. And for alumni of the college, we give a 20% rebate on their master's program. Wonderful. We have another question, Dean Meadson. For senior internship, do you get to choose where you'd like to be placed? Great question. Thank you. Yes, um, we take requests from students. Uh, students usually give us their top three choices of where they'd like to be. And then we have a full-time internship coordinator who has wonderful relationships with all the Boston hospitals and, and community hospitals. And um, she works very hard to get placements for students that matches their, um, I'd say most of them get their first choice or first or second choice for their internship. Another question about how many students are in a class as far as like the class of 2023, the entering class, how many students total? Oh, for admitting classes. So um, right now we're looking to admit 110 for the class of 2024. I'm just looking on my board. Um, the class of 2023, there's 110. The class of 2022, we currently have 96, and we have 110 in the class of 2021, and we're graduating 74 seniors this year. Another question, Dean Minson. Do nursing students typically room with other nursing students? That's a great question. Cassidy, do you want to take that question? Yeah, somebody else just actually messaged me about that same thing. But um, I lived my freshman year with a nursing major and then my sophomore year with an education major. And now I live with a mix of three nurse, like I'm one of three nursing majors and two non-nursing majors. And I find personally, you have definitely a very different workload when you're nursing than not nursing because my 
my best friend who's education, she has a ton of work due, like essays and papers. And we don't really have like homework. We just mostly have exams to study for. So it really worked well for me to have um, a nursing roommate who I could go over nursing stuff with and who understood my level of like needing quiet versus not. But I actually ended up feeling like I was a lot less stressed and a lot more able to like relax when I lived with somebody who wasn't nursing so that I could kind of see like, okay, I don't need to be studying all the time. I can be doing other stuff too. So I think that as long as you're figuring out a reliable study pattern and knowing that the library will be your best friend in nursing school, it doesn't really matter who you live with, but just try to like pick a roommate based on who you'll live well with versus what their major is. Okay. Yeah. Can you share a little bit about the new lab speech spaces that have been mentioned, the one that opened in December and the one opening in the fall of 2020? Certainly. Um, so the one, the lab space that opened in December is a five room um, primary care suite, I would call it. Um, our family nurse practitioner program uses it quite often as it simulates a primary care setting. And then um, as we mentioned, our Freshman students use it for health assessment, and actually all our grades um, use it for skills lab and different type of assessment simulations. Um, coming in the fall, it will be completed in the fall of 2020, is a brand new um, simulation area for our mannequins. Um, so this would be, these rooms would be very high-tech hospital type spaces. We have them now, but we're just redoing them a little bit to make them really, um, you know, look like a, a hospital setting and um, we're adding a control room and we're most importantly adding very um, very nice debrief rooms with monitors so students can observe each other in the setting of simulation and then debrief because that's really where the learning occurs when you talk through it and what happened in the situation how did we handle it what could we do different okay let's try this again let's go in again as a different team and try this um, so that's what our new space will look like it's really going to be nice how are you preparing your students for the next generation NCLEX? Oh, that's a wonderful question too. So um, we started early when we heard about the next generation NCLEX, um, I'd say a year and a half, two years ago. We um, put together a new course, it's called Clinical Judgment, and that basically is what the next generation NCLEX is going to be. It's going to test our students on their clinical judgment skills. So um, giving them a scenario, asking them to think critically through this scenario, and then how would they respond to the patient. So it is a different way of looking at um, test questions, and we really felt strongly that we need to prepare our students for these questions and for this test. So we have a new um, course, it's called Clinical Judgment, and actually, Rachel, do you want to speak to that? Rachel teaches the course. Oh, sure, I can speak to that. I'm really excited about this. I started planning it last summer with um, Dr. Karen Crosby, who is on here, and as well as Dr. Janet Monagle. Um, and so K Dr. Crosby and I have both taught it now for two semesters, um, and it's a really fun course for us because, as Dr. Meadston said, we give our students a clinical example and we say, okay, what would you do? You walk into your patient's room, they're having trouble breathing, they're not looking good, what's the first thing you do? So it's kind of taking all of that knowledge that they've learned in the classroom and in the clinical setting and really thinking like a nurse because they take that course their junior year. So they only have another year or so of nursing, so it really prepares them to actually think on their feet. And actually, Cassidy was one of my students in that last semester, so we have a lot of active learning in there and a lot of games that really make it fun for our students. So are the interns- add on that for a second? Sure. Sorry. Um, one thing that was really great is during your junior year, you're doing your maternity and pediatrics and psych clinicals, and so you kind of can get away a little bit from the, the nursing that we were learning freshman year. So it's a super good reminder. And it actually ended up being super helpful in terms of um, like applying stuff to the pediatrics and to the maternity classes because you get so into that mindset that you can sometimes almost forget that there, there's like real nursing involved and it's not just all the play to take vitals and stuff. So I actually think that that addition of that class makes it a lot more, um, like it just flows a lot more easily now and it's a lot more like direct. 
Okay, excellent. Um, we've heard about internships being offered in the fall and the spring. Is there an option to take an internship during the summer? Yes, there is. Um, so we will be starting that um, this summer for the first time. So we are placing students that are able to actually stay here on campus. Um, there is a fee for living in the housing, but um, it's a wonderful option for students who um, a lot of our athletes are taking advantage of it this summer and other students as well. Um, and we're placing them in internships for the summer. So it lightens their load a little bit in the senior year. And um, it seems like it's going to be a great, um, a great match for them. Great. And can you manage playing a sport and being in the nursing program? That's a wonderful question. Absolutely, yes. Um, Dr. Milne actually maybe can speak to this a little bit better. Sharon? Hi, everybody. Um, yes, you absolutely um, can manage playing a sport, and uh, we actually encourage it. It's, it's really a great way to immerse yourself um, in other areas of the college, um, you know, and to kind of, you know, get out there and uh, meet new people, be a member of a team. And we work with you to kind of, um, you know, depending on what you know, season you're playing and we work with you to kind of, you know, assist you with um, help with, you know, correspondence with your coaches, um, with your faculty, and that can go through your advisors or it can go through your, the, us as individual faculty as well. Um, but yes, we are very accommodating and very, we, we would love to have you play sports at Endicott. Do you suggest having a minor as a nursing student? And if so, which minors are the most popular? Um, that's a great question. I, I don't know that I would suggest it. Uh, nursing is quite cumbersome. Um, you know, we're, it's, it's packed. We have a lot of courses, requ required courses in the major. So we really only have um, four elective courses because we're a liberal arts college. So we have a general education core that all students have to participate in. And um, it's, it's wonderful because the core is so well rounded. You have to take courses in varied um, areas, in literary perspectives, in aesthetic awareness, in global issues and world cultures. And that's what really is the hallmark of Endicott College being a liberal arts college. Um, so with those gen eds for the liberal studies and then our nursing courses for the professional side of nursing, it, you only have four electives. Um, students do it, absolutely. And it really varies from student to student. We don't discourage it. Um, it's a wonderful thing. And as you saw, um, Cassidy has two minors, which is fabulous. Um, so it, it can be done. It absolutely can be done. And um, to Professor Milne's point, your advisor would work with you individually on preparing um, whatever minors you wanted to do. Another question about the fifth year program. Um, when do you need to decide if you want to enter into the fifth year program? Okay, so um, we ask students in their junior year so we can set up that course that they need for their senior year. But honestly, um, students can come in at any time. They can come in any time during their senior year or even, you know, if they graduate and then they decide they want to come in, that's, that works as well. Do you recommend that students have a car for clinicals? Uh, students do not need a car. They, um, they don't it's not required. Most of our students carpool, so four or five will go together to clinical. Um, some of them take transportation, but they tend to like to drive in, I think, and then they just carpool and they pool their money for gas and parking. Um, so that it's not required. And what is the status of the CCNE accreditation? Is the pandemic um, going to delay this or did it still happen as scheduled? That's a wonderful question. <laughs> um, our CCNE accreditation was postponed. We're waiting for a date. Most likely it will be in the fall. Um, we, will we will remain accredited. We, we are accredited with ACEN. And let me just explain the difference. ACEN is predominantly the accreditation um, for uh, associate degree programs. And we were an associate degree program going back probably 15 years ago. Um, and we've just stayed with ACEN, but we, the faculty uh, decided that they would like to be accredited by CCNE, which is the gold standard for baccalaureate and higher programs. So um, that's the only reason why we're switching accreditation. Um, and so they were all postponed, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus outbreak, and um, we're hoping that we will be rescheduled for the fall.
and everything's going great. We had a mock visit with a consultant and we got very high reviews. So we're very confident about our accreditation. If you get more accepted students than expected, how is the ratio handled? Um, Megan, are you still on? Could we? Can I'm here, Nancy. Could we give sure. that one to you? So that's a, that's a good question. Um, and that is um, our job in the Office of Admission to use uh, historical data to be able to predict how many students we can admit to the nursing program. So we do offer admission to many more than 110 students, but we know that not every student is going to take us up on our offer of admission. Um, so yes, we, would, we will honor anyone that wants to come, but I can tell you from many years of experience, um, we likely will not over-enroll the class, and we do leave ourselves some wiggle room just in case, so. Thank you. Can I do my summer internship at a hospital near my home in New York? That is a great question. Um, right now, we're just doing some, this summer, we're just doing summer internships in Massachusetts. We hope to extend to other states. The issue is that I need to get permission from the Board of Registration and Nursing in any other state. And it is, it's a bit cumbersome. So this is our first summer doing summer internships. So um, we just stayed with Massachusetts, but we do hope to extend. Some, some states do not allow pre-licensure nursing students um, who are in a school out of state to do any type of clinical or internship in their state, like Florida. I already, um, you know, I did inquire with Florida and they don't allow that. So I don't know about New York, but um, once after this summer, that was our um, plan. Our next step was to see if we can accommodate students who are out of state for their summer internship. Great. And are tests given during the school year formatted like the NCLEX? Um, so one of the faculty want to take that? Bethany, you want to take that? I'm happy to take it. Oh, thanks, Cindy. You're oh. welcome. So yes, we start actually um, freshman year integrating um, a few of the alternative style questions. So um, they may get some questions with pictures and where is the best place to feel for a pedal pulse and there's some choices and um, we also integrate select all that apply questions so yes throughout the curriculum we don't um, just hit them senior year they get a, a few different um, alternative style questions integrated throughout as well as um, in the ati product dr nasser spoke about so they are there they are prepared when it comes time for the test the um the boards when they do take them mm -hmm. thank you um can you do clinicals while on study abroad we don't do any type of nursing courses study abroad so when you're study abroad you just take electives um, we're not allowed from the board of registration and nursing to do those courses abroad and how many students usually travel abroad? I'd say about, I think I've calculated about 35% um, of the junior class each year goes abroad. Okay. Are all of the nursing classes in the nursing school or are they in other buildings on campus? All of the nursing classes are in the School of Nursing. The science classes are in the Arts and Science building. And then your other, the gen eds I was talking about, the literary perspectives and um, aesthetic awareness, those are in all different buildings on the, on the campus. This is a real wonderful question. How are the nursing students being supported during the COVID crisis? That is a wonderful question. Cassidy, can you address that? Um, that's been super, like, very reassuring of this school, but we've gotten, so I was abroad, so I wasn't even at this school, supposed to be there this semester, but I'm still being very included where, um, from the School of Nursing, they're keeping us up to date with emails and holding um, Zoom with the deans every few nights where we can check in and ask questions, and they're all available by email or text in case we need to ask them anything and then the counselors have also emailed that they're available for zooming and for conversations if we're like having some emotional struggles during this and the president of the school has sent out video chats like we're getting communicated to from the college almost every day so it's been really good with like including us 
Thanks, Great. Cassidy. Amy, Thank could you. you could you just speak to that for um, what you're doing for simulation? Sure. So um, with this pandemic, our students have um, not been allowed to uh, enter into their clinical placements. Uh, and so we have um, worked with all of the faculty. It's been a team effort and we've created virtual clinical content uh, where we have um, worked from evidence-based clinical scenarios and we've um, video captured them and created uh, YouTube videos uh, with embedded purposeful, thoughtful, reflective questions to get them thinking. Um, and then we schedule debriefing sessions with the clinical faculty to review those scenarios. I think the students have found them to be very engaging and uh, very effective. All right, next question. Uh, what math and science courses are part of the program as well? Um, so for math, we have a statistics course. Uh, for sciences, we have anatomy and physiology one and two, microbiology and pathophysiology. Did I forget anything? Okay. <laughs> Are there any added fees for the tutoring? No, the tutoring is all free. So the peer tutoring from the library with the students, your peers um, who have taken the courses, usually they're upperclassmen who have taken those nursing courses, um, that's all through the college and our tutoring, our professional tutoring on nurses who um, you, know, you can make a, a, an appointment with. We have a Google Doc online. The students can just access that and make an appointment and that's all free. So another question about study abroad. What countries can you study abroad in? You can go to any country. Um, so it's, they've gone to Australia, Spain, France, Italy, Prague, um, England, what haven't I said? Every, uh, Greece. Greece. Um, <laughs> where? Greece, yeah. <laughs> um, so they've got, they can go anywhere. There's no restrictions on where they can go. Ireland, a lot go to Ireland. Mm -hmm. Are there any languages offered as electives? And if so, would you think this would be helpful for nursing? Yes, yes, there are languages. We have Italian and Chinese, um, Spanish. Uh, I think, I'm not even sure all the languages, but um, we highly recommend, especially the Spanish. That's a wonderful language for nurses to have. So um, we recommend students take those. And another question about the fifth year program. Do students have to reapply for the fifth year program or is everyone automatically accepted into it? Well, you do, you do have to apply. You have to have a minimum GPA to get into the fifth year program. Um, but we've made the application process quite seamless because you're here, I can look at your transcripts. I oversee not just the undergraduate, but the graduate program. So, um, so we've done it, we've created, uh, an application process that's very streamlined. You don't have to get your transcripts. I can look at your transcripts. Um, you don't have to really get a recommendation because I can talk to the faculty. So, um, so that's really the process. It's very streamlined. There are parameters, but it's very streamlined. Excellent. Do we have a doctor of nursing pro program, a doctor of nursing practice program in place uh, in case nurse practitioners are required to have that in the future? Well, we're, that's a great question. We're in the process of writing that program. So it's about ready to go. It's coming to the faculty for approval in April, and then it will go to the Board of Trustees in May, and then it will go to the Department of Education over the summer. Um, so we hope to have it up and going um, fairly soon in preparation for the uh, new, if the FMPs are required to um, you know, get a DMP as the entry level. So it, it's in the works and we have it, we, I'd say we have it um, pretty much written from our end. We just need to go through the approval process at this point. Do freshman nursing students have an older buddy from the nursing program that could provide extra support? That's a great question. Um, Sharon or Bethany or Cassidy, you wanna take that? Um, so every year, the. SNA, like Students of Nursing Association, tries to do a buddy program, so you can always find buddies through that, and they can help carry you up. But also, you have your orientation leader, who's always a nursing student, who you can go to about anything. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, what is your retention rate in the nursing program? 
Uh, so our first to second year retention rate is 94%. Is there any way for us prospective students to get in contact with current nursing students? Well, that's a wonderful question. Um, we can make that happen, absolutely. You could email me and um, I could put you in contact. Go ahead, Cassidy, did you wanna say something? No, you could also email. I gave, I replied to that girl in my email, but I can, anybody's free to email me too. If you email Dean Meads and she can definitely forward you my email too. Wonderful, thank you. Or I'll just put yes. it in. Okay, and what grades do you need to maintain in order to remain in the nursing program? Has anyone ever been kicked out because they couldn't maintain that certain grade? So um, in the nursing program, we do have a progression policy. Um, you need to um, achieve a C plus in your nursing courses and C in your science courses. And you can re repeat one science course once and one nursing course once. Um, I hate to say kicked out. We, um, <laughs> we have lost some students along the way, to be totally honest with you. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it, it makes us as sad as it makes them. Um, we do everything we can to support the students and we do feel very strongly that this is our role. If you've been accepted and you've been a qualified student to get in that, we try to help you through the program um, and we do everything we can, but sometimes it's just not the timing for a student um, or they, it's just not, you know, they think they want nursing, but they just don't have that, um, that motivation maybe drive to stick with it because it is challenging it's quite challenging um, we we have also for students who don't um, you know are are not going to progress any longer in the nursing program we do have a process where they can um, you know appeal or you know see if they could come back in at a later time i've reached the end of our quest oh one more here we go Oh, a couple more. Hold on. Do you drop students between first and second year who don't reach the grade criteria like some other nursing programs? Um, between, what was that? I'm sorry? Freshman and sophomore year. No, so it would only be, our, our only criteria is that you get the C plus in your nursing program, in your nursing courses, and a C in your science courses. So again, if you didn't get a C in AMP1, which is your first semester freshman year, um, you would have to repeat AMP1, and then you would take AMP2 if you didn't get a C in AMP2 because of it's a science grade. You know um, that's where our progression um, policy would be implemented that you couldn't progress because you've already repeated one science, and we don't allow to repeat two. But um, as I said, we we've looked at our um, process, and we are um, you know there are ways for students to um, appeal and you know uh, we're, we're trying to commit to the students who get accepted into our program in whatever way we can. And are nursing students grouped together in the community? Is it easy to meet others in the community? Do you want to talk about that Cassidy? Um, yeah so freshman year you are only in the nursing building for a few classes so you have mixed classes with everybody like your gen ed classes and then there's continuously ways to meet people, obviously all through college, like where you live and um, in your dorm and everything like that. But then especially, I got really close with a lot of people who weren't nursing students when I went abroad. So you're kind of meeting new people all through college. Wonderful. Are we able to take any CLEP tests to eliminate some of the electives? Oh, hmm. Megan, do you know? So I think that um, they are referring to transfer credits. So if you are taking a course that um, offers some form of college credit in high school, um, that is likely what they are referring to. So I can yeah. con continue to answer it, Nancy, or if you want to. Yeah, take so over we'll. With yeah, so if, if you've taken like AP credits in um, high school, we accept them. Um, and then we, we work individually with the student. Is it best that you not take that class or do you want to keep the credits but take that class anyway? Um, you know, it, it sort of depends on what the AP um, subject is and um, on the student as well. 
but yes, we accept their AP grades. And that's a wonderful way, at, Cassidy, you probably had AP grades, I'm suspecting, because um, then, she, then it opens up her schedule a little bit more so she can minor. And the college does treat the CLEP tests similar to the AP credits, just okay. for the audience listening. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I have no additional questions. Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to say, I just had two comments. One is um, just Dr. Mitsakis was talking about our wonderful seniors. And I just wanted to direct you all to our webpage. Um, on the main Endicott webpage, there's a section COVID-19. And there's two beautiful articles on um, what two of our nursing, our senior nursing students are doing out in the community, um, in that working in the hospitals during this um, you know, crisis that we're having. And I couldn't be prouder of um, what they're doing and what they've written about. So I direct you there to read a little bit more. And um, just thank you um, for joining us. We are going to the simulations that we've created for our students uh, or Dr. Smith has created for our students are really something to see. So we're going to try to send you a little um, a little <laughs> treat after this. Uh, and it might take us a little while to put it together, but we'll try to email it out to the participants of this um, you know, forum to um, just give you an idea of what we're doing here uh, for virtual simulation for our students. I also just got two more questions. Um, <laughs> one is about the housing situation on campus. So freshman year, and you live in a dorm that has uh, there's a lot of options and you can go to the website and then look at the housing tab but freshman year you're in mainly three dorms and then there's a few smaller ones and you have a communal bathroom and usually one somewhere between one and four three other roommates and then sophomore year um, it's the same thing but you usually have a private bathroom junior and senior year you usually live in apartment style housing um, and then another question was about being abroad and if it was more difficult to try to get nursing classes done in your time abroad, you actually aren't doing nursing classes. That's your general education um, semester. So everybody in the nursing school, for them, it's like a breeze because we're so used to having the nursing classes. So um, yeah, they make it super doable. And Cassidy, Cassidy, we have another question for you. Did you go random or did you find a roommate online? So my freshman year, I found a roommate online and that was, I'm not trying to like scare anybody out of it, but that was definitely something I would not recommend doing because you know three lines of information about somebody and then decide to live with them. Where the random like selection um, process, they have a whole big form that you fill out and that's all of my friends who went random are still living with their roommates and all of my friends who didn't tend to be, but me and my friend, like the girl who I lived with are still good friends today. It's just um, but then last year I lived with an education major who I met in my dorm and then this year I lived with people that I met so my recommendation would definitely be to um, find a roommate through the school. And another question for us, how is the diversity in the nursing program? Um, I'd say we have about 10% uh, or maybe 9% um, male students, which is wonderful. Uh, Dr. Mitsakis' son is one of our male nursing students. Um, and then uh, as far as other diversity, um, it, it's, it's low. I'd say about 3% um, diverse students in the nursing program. Any other questions? Okay. No. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And please feel free to reach out to me or uh, Associate Dean um, Amy Smith if you have any questions. Great to see you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.